finished with the pharmacy for the weekend. So let me tell you what's going on and what's fixing to go on. I'm going to trade these glasses out for my special glasses that I can wear in the sunlight and prevent from giving me a headache. I love my prescription eyewear. I'm going to put the seatbelt on before I crank the truck. And what we're looking at here in my part of the world is cold weather is inbound. We had a front pass through a couple days ago. Got a lot of nasty rain, some cold north wind, everything was kind of a mess. It has passed by and we are looking at a blue clear sky, very mild temperatures. We're looking at 50s today and 60s tomorrow. Probably the best shot of weather we've got coming in the near future. After that, another front will push through and it will get cold. We are looking at 40s and 20s. So I'm going to capitalize on the day. I've got a student in town today. I got two more coming tomorrow. And yeah, we're going to go do this thing, man. Do some Paris stuffs. And I thought I would vlog it and record it and give you like the last two good days of the year. Wrong. Potentially. It could warm back up. This is Louisiana. Just because they're showing 40s and 20s in the forecast for the next week does not mean the week after that it might not hit 80 or 90. Yeah, today's November the 9th, so it could could very well be a 90 degree day. Hey, there's some girls I know. She works for me. So yeah, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna go to the house and hook up to the paratrailer. I'm probably gonna adjust some brakes on my uh, Dudek Universal. I found that consistently the brakes come set very low from the factory. It's a very minuscule thing to correct them. I plan on doing some vlogs for the next couple of days. Even though I'm doing training, I may get with the students and see if they want to include themselves in the video, and we will go from there. So y'all join me. Let's get right to it. Well, hello there. You ever seen a man this good looking before in your life? <laughs> Me neither. Me neither. <laughs> Mr. Bob is done showing out for the day. We are going to take this Adam 80 up. It is warm and ready to rock. I didn't put my gloves on. I suck. But I'm just going to go up, do a little Adam 80 run, see if I can get this thing to die. That's what it's been trying. How many times did it bog on you? Always at full power, right? That's when it does it to me too. So we haven't fully figured out what's causing that, but it seems to be at a full power setting. It just bog. I'm going to see if I can't reproduce it. I am going to grab some gloves and my eyewear. Come here, eyewear. There we go. I got the Universal 23 laid out. Zero wind. Ah, there's one mile an hour, maybe, maybe a half. It's going to be a fast launch either way we look at it. I'm going to have to exhibit perfect technique. If I can do that, I will have a successful launch. Let that motor push me right into the sky. Watch how easy this thing cranks. Clear. Uh oh. Ah. It's the first time I've ever had to do it on the second pull. All right, that seems to be working. Let's find the end of these lines here. There we go. It looks like I'm going to be going this direction. Take a couple steps back. And then hit it hard. Woohoo! Whoa! Whoa! It doesn't want to climb. Yeah, it's bogging a little. I don't know what's up. Beautiful sunset. Tip steering. Yeah, I'm, I've been on full power the whole time. It keeps bogging down. I don't know what is up with that. We interrupt this program to bring you a special report. So this brings up a really important point and worth an interruption. I've been training students to fly on this engine even after it became sick. It never died. It would bog. It causes you to perk up every time this happens. The students that had the opportunity to train on this machine, it immediately became ingrained in their mind. I do not need to trust this motor. This thing might die any second. And it seems unnerving, but once you get past that and you swallow that, 
That's the way you're supposed to fly a paramotor anyway. It's running good and you get complacent, that's where you get hurt. It's where you put yourself in a bad spot. Now, it was worth interrupting the video to mention that here. If you're flying the thing, like if it starts to get sick and do these things and bog down on you and lose power and you become nervous and freaked out and tensed up, well, then you're flying wrong anyway. You need to be ready for that. You need to smile when it happens. When that motor bogs and you need to have your landing picked and just go for it. It's no big deal. If you're not doing that, if your motor has trouble and you immediately get tensed up and worried, it's because you're not flying the thing correctly. Now, that's a pro tip, safety tip, call it what you want. But that's the way I fly. And ever since I started flying that way, I don't get bothered if the motor has trouble. I just do what I'm going to do. That's, there you go. That's it. All right, back to the video. That's all right, though. We're just going to keep climbing. Oh, look, we brought the sun back. <laughs> And it already went down and now it's coming back up because we're climbing. I love paramotors. It's almost like you could do magical shit. Like a sunrise, I mean a sunset twice. Like damn wizardry. Even with a sick ass motor. So I was squeezing the primer bulb a few times and now it's not doing it anymore. So we're going to give it another minute. We're still looking for aircraft out here. I think it's fuel delivery, like, that's what I think. Okay, and there it goes again. Alright, whenever it starts, I'm going to squeeze the primer bulb and see if we can stop it. Huh. That's weird, man. Alright, let's come down to about half throttle. I'm doing that. I wonder what Vitarazzi says about this particular condition. A hiccup. Hiccup. Do a little crosswind foot drag, why don't we? Yeah, it's still doing it. I don't know. It definitely sounds like fuel starvation. It's not getting enough gas in it, which is odd because it ran great for six hours without an issue. But the, it's the it's the night. If it was just like a setting, though, it would it would just do it. I don't know. It would do it like like it would be smooth. Like it would always be running low RPM. The fact that it's like dying down and then picking up that makes me think air. Air's getting in there. I don't know where or how or why, but we'll we'll put it on the rack and figure it out later, I guess. So that was a quick one. Got what I needed. <laughs> <laughs> Enough to know that my motor's messing up. Ah, that's hilarious. All right, we're going to put this shit up. What's up, guys? Kyle out. So this is usually where I would end the video, but not yet, guys. There's a second part of this. I put the thing on the operating table, and this is what we do from here on out. So this is like maybe part three on Adam 80 Woes. After about six hours, it developed this bad habit of bogging under full power. I've probably already made part of the video describing that in flight. This is several iterations later. 
I changed out the clunk thinking maybe that was the issue. What I believe is the problem is bubbles in the fuel line. I've been watching it with my Kurt Fister approved signal mirror here. I'm able to see what's going on and I can see that the fuel is slurping air. It's either pulling it out of the primer bulb or out of the connection into the fuel tank. So I'm gonna do something a little different here. I'm gonna switch over, no primer bulb, go to a classic blow tube. Yeah, I know everybody likes to blow. There's a good blow joke in here somewhere. I'm sure of it, but I'm not gonna do it. I'm not gonna say it. So we're gonna blow in this thing and make it, fuck, <laughs> Jesus, what's wrong with me? <laughs> I can't even talk about it. I'm gonna put a blow tube in here. I'm gonna put a continuous, a continuous? What's a continuous mean? Continuously wanting petting? I'm gonna put a continuous line from the clunk at the bottom of the tank all the way to the carburetor where there are no brakes in it so it can't slurp air from anywhere. We're gonna try that and see what happens and that's what I'm fixing to do right now. The absolute best way to get the clunk out is with a uh, coat hanger with a little hook on it. We're gonna leave it down here. We're gonna hook it and we got it. Come on. There we go. Come on. Ah, there we are. That was the clunk that I had on there. Very nice. I recommend this. It's got a screen instead of a mesh, so it doesn't take in anything. There's also a valve in there that prevents the fuel from running back down into the tank. Love this style of clunk. I recommend that you get it. I think I got it from a snowmobile company. If you're looking for a replacement clunk, I like these. It's, it's never failed me. All right, so off camera, I've replumbed the clunk. Let me just show you what I did here. Okay, so we've got a straight tube that runs all the way down to the tank, and the clunk I showed you sits level down at the bottom. I just used my little flashlight here, and I could see where it was where it was banging around. You can kind of see it in there right now. But it's hanging down at the bottom. It's held steady. I've got a blow hose. I drilled out the top of the of the fuel cap there, and I just ran a straight hose. The one that's coming out of the clunk, it goes right here. There's a tiny little bubble in there. We're gonna keep an eye on that. And then I've just got your typical blow hose so that you can come around and uh, as you're priming it, you can just blow into the tank to pressurize it and push fuel up into here. So that's my fix, I hope. We're gonna go do another test flight and see if we can get this thing to bog down. I'm, I'm pretty sure this is gonna do it, like fingers crossed, but I was watching it with my, no pilot should have a mirror and just seeing what's going on with my machine back there. That's like use number 49 for a mirror. So no, I, I saw a video where that dude, uh, Kirk, Captain Kirk, said that mirrors were stupid and you shouldn't have them and they're not helpful at all and bad pilots use them. Frankly, I've never heard a more ridiculous statement regarding paramotors. Mirrors are useful for everything. You can signal, you can check your fuel, you can check your helmet, you can check your engine. It just gives you another visual opportunity that you wouldn't have without one. You know, for the price you pay in weight, what, an ounce? What's a little mirror and a piece of Velcro? Maybe an ounce and a half? Uh. <laughs> Why not? Again, dumbest shit I've ever heard anybody say was don't carry a mirror on your paramotor. I'm putting them on all my paramotors from now on because they're so useful. Is it good, buddy? Now, it's time to go to the field. Well, actually, I have to go to the drugstore, fill some prescriptions, then we're gonna go to the field. It'll be fun. All right, so check it out, guys. I'm gonna end the video here. I did go flying. I did figure out that my fuel line was the fix. It was slurping air. It was obvious I could see it with my little handy dandy mirror. But the flight that I took is deserving of a video all by itself. It was the craziest, most insane conditions I've ever flown in. I think 15 gusting 25 and Yours truly decided to go for a little jolt out into the sky. The motor ran great. Everything seemed to be fine. But hey, the, like I say, the video is deserving of its own video. So I'm going to end it here and just tell you that my fix has worked and I'm happy. A couple of minor details. I'm going to cover that in another video because I bought another Vitarazzi Atom 80 on a MacFly frame. I did a whole video about like setting that one up and flying it and breaking it in and going through some exercises. So look for that one too. Gotta look. God, uh, God. Uh. <laughs> What I was trying to say was I've got a lot of good content coming. Feel free to subscribe, like, share, all that stuff. Thumbs down if you are not going to participate in Christmas this year and you think it's a joke. For the rest of you guys, much love. Kyle out.